If you're a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you're looking for more money to fund your deals, regardless of what your mortgage banker, your hard money lender, or any of those traditional sources would say, don't go anywhere. You're in the right place. And before I plug you into the funding, I want to give you a special welcome. Particularly if this is your first time uh, joining into the show, my name is Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, and I'm coming to you here from Moorhead City, North Carolina, and we've now got followers all over the world. You're part of a movement. We're getting thousands and thousands of downloads and listens now every week, and we're just glad to have you here on the show. If this is your first time here at uh, Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor, we talk about everything in regards to real estate investing, single family houses, commercial, finding deeply discounted properties and deals, how to get funding for your deals, how to sell them, how to automate the process. And if you've been tuning in and listening, you know that I have had and I'm having some just pretty amazing guests and experts here on the show. And today I've got a stellar expert that I'm going to introduce to you in just a moment. And we're going to be talking about self-directed IRAs and how you can make unlimited returns on your investment with tax-deferred strategies. And so we're going to get into all of that in just a moment. But first, I want to let everybody know how to get plugged into the money, regardless of your credit, your experience, your verification of income. And that is I've got an on-demand uh, webinar, a class that I just recently uh, recorded that's ready for you to watch and listen to. The name of it is Where to Get the Money Now, and that gives you the five steps on getting funding for your real estate deals, and it's got nothing to do with banks or institutions or mortgage companies. And so we're going to put up the website right here that you can go check out the free training after the show, and it's right here at www.jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R, forward slash money podcast. So one more time, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money podcast. And also, if you are uh, just tuning in on Google Play or uh, iTunes, we appreciate you uh, subscribing so you don't miss out on any future content. Be sure and rate and review. And if you're watching on uh, any of our YouTube channels, go right below and we appreciate your comments. Also subscribe and also put your questions in and we'll be glad to get all of your questions answered. So with that, we're moving right on to our special guest today, a very good friend of mine. We got to come to know each other. My lands, I guess it's been at least three years ago now, maybe longer. And so let me tell you about him. His name is Nate Hare and Nate went to Auburn, Alabama, got his degree at the University of Portland. And after that, he moved on over to Nevada, where he attended Key Realty School and got his real estate license. But his true love became more in the mortgage industry. And Nate's been a mortgage consultant and a loan officer and an expert for many, many years now. So at the beginning of his career, he worked for um, one of the largest private lenders in the state for over six years. And uh, he became a top producing consultant with a company called Silver State Mortgage. And so he really got his uh, foundation built in the mortgage industry. Back in 2003, check this out, Nate was submitted as a nominee for the Mortgage Loan Consultant Rookie of the Year Award for all loan consultants across the nation. And so no doubt, Nate has proven a lot of success in his career thus far. Back in 2012, Nate's experience led him on over to being attracted to work with a group and company called Quest Trust Company. And he began his journey with Quest to become an IRA specialist, which he did. And he worked right underneath the principals of that company, President Quincy Long and also CEO Nathan Long. Now, bringing it up to date right now, Nate has been a very, very important and key component of Quest Trust Company's 300% growth. And he's excelled to the position of executive vice president. He oversees and manages the IRA specialist team, the sales and marketing departments, transactions departments, as well as Quest Large networking events. They have at least two huge networking events every year. And he'll be telling you about those that are coming up. And those are hosted throughout the nation. 
So with that, my good friend and IRA specialist and expert, Nate Hare, welcome to the show. How are you doing, Jay? Always good to be with you. So much energy. Can't wait to see you again in person. Absolutely. Well, you know, uh, Nate, I always enjoy having you come out to uh, my live events. Uh, Self-directed IRAs are such an important part of mine and Carol Joy's real estate investing business. You know, we've been doing the business now for 15 years. And of those 15 years, 10 of the past 15 years, self-directed IRAs have been very, very critical as part of our real estate investing business where we have introduced our private lenders to, you know, Quest. I tell you, I've had service from different self-directed IRAs and Quest hands down, and I'm not just telling you this because you're on the show, but I mean, it is hands down the truth from experience. For over a year now, all of uh, our private lenders that we use have got their accounts at Quest, and the service is just phenomenal. I mean, emails get answered in less than an hour, phone messages get answered, and anyway, I just can't say enough good things about your all's customer service, Nate. Well, I, I really appreciate that. And that, that's actually one thing that is our prime focus with our business model is when you run a self-directed IRA company, we all have the same product. So the only way that you uh, differentiate yourself is with the service. So we try to pride ourselves on having what we call world famous customer service. We don't like people getting voicemails. We don't like people uh, not getting responses on emails. So we train very diligently uh, to make sure that the clients uh, respect our world famous service because it's it's a very important these days. Well, there's no doubt about that. And you know, just from my own experience, when I've got a real estate deal that I'm ready to get funded, and you know, one of my private lenders using their retirement funds at Quest is going to be funding my real estate deal. I mean, literally, you know, one thing I love about Quest is you know, there's some other services out there that charge this thing called expedited service. What's beautiful about Quest is everything is expedited. Everything's expedited. There's no need to charge for expedited service. Everything's expedited. No charge. That's right. And that's the truth because I know from experience on, I've, I've lost count now as to the number of deals, real estate investing deals I've done with Quest being the custodian for the funds that are funding the deal. From the time that my private lender puts in the request to a direction of investment until the time that the deal is funded. It's less than a week, hands down every time. And I mean, that when you talk about customer service from the standpoint of a real estate investor doing business with a private lender, that third party component of that, of making that transaction happens, very, very important. And in, in fact, and particularly when we put an offer in to the seller of a property and closing quickly is very, very important. Having Quest right there as part of the team to make the deal get funded quickly is just critical to, you know, making sure none of the wheels run off the track. Well, and I think that's one of the things that makes Quest successful is, for instance, myself, you kind of mentioned it. I come from a, quote, real estate background, right? Out of college, I always had an interest in real estate. Didn't really know where I wanted to take it at that time, you know, being a young kid out of college, but went to real estate school, got my real estate license just for the fun of it, gravitated toward the mortgage industry. And I also bought and sold my own real estate at the time. I owned about 17 rental properties before I decided I did not like being a landlord, but I'd still liked real estate. But I I had all that experience prior to coming to Quest. So I understand the need for you know, the deal had to be funded yesterday and we got to get the money out. We've got to get earnest money out. And so do our other principals. Our, our president, uh, Quincy Long, and our founder, is a, he's a real estate attorney. He was a fee attorney for American Title Company for, for decades. He's, you know, been a part of hundreds and thousands of real estate transactions personally. And, and so as our CEO and our other vice president. So we understand what real estate investors go through. And we realize that money needs to get out right away. And I'm very passionate about what we do is because we actually help real estate investors buy more property using other people's money, which might be in a retirement account here at, here at Quest. And there's a lot of win-win situations when you as an investor can not only buy and rehab more property and, you know, uh, add value to the community, but also use people's retirement accounts and pay them above average interest 
for using their money instead of investing in just say the stock market or some nameless mutual fund. So we understand what real estate investors go through. We, we are real estate investors ourselves and we pride ourselves on how to teach people how to use retirement accounts uh, as the funding source for those real estate deals. Well, you know, a, a large part of my audience does know what a self-directed IRA is, but my best guess is we've got quite a few people that are watching or listening to the show that do not know what a self-directed IRA company is. So let's go back to square one and Nate, tell our audience, what is a self-directed IRA company? Well, and for the listeners out there who don't know what a self-directed IRA is, it's okay. I went 15 years without even hearing that name mentioned. So when I started learning about it, I thought, how come I have never been told about a self-directed IRA before? So only about 5% of Americans really understand what a self-directed IRA is, but here's how it works is you have retirement accounts and retirement accounts are all governed by the same set of rules. You can have a retirement account or an IRA at Fidelity. You can have an, an IRA at Quest. Well, an IRA at Fidelity, you're limited as to what you can invest in because you can only invest in stocks and bonds and mutual funds, but that's only because Fidelity makes money selling those investments. It doesn't mean you're limited to those investments. It just means when you have your IRA with Fidelity, that's all you're going to be sold. When you have an IRA at Quest, we don't sell investments. So our account agreement states, we'll allow you to hold anything in your IRA that the IRS allows, but you have to pick the investment. We'll hold it for you. We'll sign the documents. We'll be the administrator of the account without selling you the investment. But when we're not licensed to sell you anything, now the spectrum goes as far out as the IRS will allow you. And the IRS actually doesn't disallow us from investing in things like real estate, investments into promissory notes, investments into private companies and oil and gas interests. And those are investments that we hold here at Quest Trust Company. That, that's why we call it a quote self-directed IRA. So basically, we're just an IRA administrator that holds assets outside of the public market. So we hold traditional or non-traditional private assets like real estate, promissory notes, and the other things that I mentioned. And why that's important to real estate investors out there is it's always twofold. And we teach a lot about this, teach a, uh, this in a lot of our classes is that when you think about your retirement accounts, retirement accounts are a great way to grow investments, like you said, tax deferred, but even better, tax free. So if you're a real estate investor, you should want to understand how you grow some of your real estate investments completely tax free within your own self-directed IRA. But the other side of it is when you understand how the self-directed IRA works, that opens up a whole nother door for you to use other people's self-directed IRAs to fund more of your own personal investments. And you'll find that more people out there that have retirement accounts would rather hand you the money as a real estate investor and have you do the work and they just get the mailbox money on the interest payments than them having to go do the work. And the benefit to using self-directed IRA or IRAs as a private capital source is there's unlimited amounts of money out there sitting in people's retirement accounts And they're probably not satisfied with their returns. And there's about $29 trillion in retirement accounts today. And very little of it is used to fund direct purchases of real estate only because not a lot of people know how the self-directed IRA works and how it can be so advantageous to them. But if they found out, they would be just as excited as I was when I found out you can use all that money to buy real estate with no use of your credit and no use of your income, by the way. Yeah, it's, you know, I don't know another vehicle like this. And, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to get into politics. I hope it stays around for a long time. Me too. Uh, but the bottom line is people should take advantage of it while they've got it. You know, you, we talk about tax deferred income and tax free income. I've got one particular private lender by using his self directed IRA earned $65,000 just last year from my company, tax-free, tax-free. And so, Nate, a lot of my students will sometimes come up to me when they first heard about self-directed IRAs, and they'll say, well, how do I get started using a self-directed IRA? And they'll say, can I take just my some liquid capital or, or investment capital I've got and just go put it in an IRA so I can earn it tax-free or tax-deferred. 
And of course, you know the answer to that question. So uh, keeping it really, really basic, Nate, um, how do people get started? I mean, can they take a current retirement fund and transfer it or roll it over or whatever the legal term is? And how can they do it without having a concern or fear of any kind of penalties or any kind of additional taxes? The first thing that I always recommend people is talk to an IRA specialist because they can answer all the questions that you might have. And speaking all over the nation, I find that a lot of people just have misconceptions and a lot of fears that can be alleviated if they just talk to a professional like us. We'll just walk them through the process. And the process is pretty simple. In order to start a self-directed IRA, you just fill out an application. And that really only takes a couple minutes. And again, one of our IRA specialists can help you establish the account. Once the account's established, you can fund it several different ways. I think our most common way people fund it is just by transferring money from one of their other IRAs. Transfers are not reported to the IRS. It's not a distribution. You're just moving it from, say, your IRA at Fidelity to your IRA at Quest. There's no taxable situation there. And you choose how much you want to transfer. You can transfer all of it. You can transfer some of it. I actually believe people should have accounts with Quest and have accounts at Fidelity. And the reason I think that is because you want to have your best way to diversify your assets. And the best way to have diversification is have an IRA that can hold some private assets like real estate or promissory notes. And you have an, have an IRA at Fidelity that holds your stocks and bonds and mutual funds. And just know you can transfer money between us two companies all day long and there's no taxable situation. But you want to make sure your money is always invested and always moving. So you want to have those two vehicles open for you. Other ways that people fund the account is if you have, say, an old 401k or an old employer plan at a job that you used to work at, most of the time, once you've left that job, you can roll that money into an IRA at Quest or Fidelity or both. Uh, and then the final way that you can make uh, contributions to the account, which is just your annual contributions, which you kind of mentioned, I think that is what is actually limited on how much you can take out of your pocket and add as a contribution, there's limits there, but there's no limits on transfers, there's no limits on rollovers, and there's no limits on profit. And that's the key component is that you can make as much profit in your IRA. There's no stopping you on that. And that doesn't even go against your contribution. So I'm a firm believer in you want to contribute as little to the account as possible, have your investments grow the size. And if you do it in the right account, it can be completely tax-free for the rest of your life and the life of your heirs. Yeah, so let's drill down, Nate, on some of the different ways that people can make money in their self-directed IRA. So first, let's start with what most people's perspective is, and that is the traditional way. So pretty much the traditional way to make money in your retirement account, whether it's a 401k, a Roth IRA or a pension or, you know, in any kind of retirement account is you are either investing in the stock market with your retirement funds. Okay. Or you're with a company and that company, you get to choose like, you know, different mutual funds or stocks. So wouldn't you say traditionally the primary investment vehicle that people have had to choose from for their retirement money is in the stock market, right? Yes. And that is not necessarily, that is not an account type, but that's an investment type. And that's one of the misconceptions a lot of people have is that I've got this brokerage IRA or this rollover IRA, and it only allows me to invest in this mutual fund. Well, that's fine. And I'm not saying mutual funds are bad. But that has nothing to do with the IRA. That just has to do with who holds your IRA. What are they limiting you to? When you have an IRA at Quest, we don't limit you. Our account agreement says we'll allow you to invest in anything the IRS allows. And the IRS only tells us we're not allowed to hold two things, life insurance contracts and collectibles. That's it. Anything else is fair game. So whatever investment you have, whatever you can hold title to, if you want to own it in your IRA, you just have to find a company that's willing to administrate your IRA to hold that investment. And we hold, I would say, everything outside of the stock market that would be considered non-traditional investments. Yeah. So let's talk about some of those non-traditional investments that, 
I mean, we have this world here, Nate. Most people have never heard of a self-directed IRA. And then along with that, most people have not heard of, well, wow, I can actually take part of my or all of my retirement funds once they are in a IRS approved self-directed IRA company, such as Quest, I can take those retirement funds and I can go invest, say, for example, in real estate. So take, uh, take a moment, Nate, and talk about how could someone actually take their retirement funds or part of them and invest in real estate? And how does that work? How do they make money with that? Well, and it's, it's funny that one of the first things that I thought was odd is that real estate is considered a non-traditional investment. To me, I don't know any more traditional investment than a piece of real estate, than a home. That is just... Yeah. Right. That's called programming. Exactly. They're programming you to think that stocks and bonds are traditional, but a house is non-traditional. To me, a house is traditional. And I think most people realize the advantages to owning real estate, whether it's in an IRA or not, right? If you look at real estate on, on in any given year, you take real estate, the value of it today, and you go back 15 years in time, it's almost always worth more now than it was 15 years ago. It has its ups and downs, but it always rises in value. You have multiple income streams with real estate. So even if the property value doesn't go up, but you're holding it as a rental, you get rents. There's all sorts of strategies with real estate options and lease options and all there's all these different ways that you can create income for yourself with real estate but at the end of the day the best thing about real estate is that it's a tangible investment a stock is not tangible you invest in the wrong company you own stock in you know some bank and the bank goes belly up well you don't have anything left as an investment but with real estate it's tangible so I think there's a lot of advantages to real estate and definitely putting real estate in an IRA gives you the additional advantage where not only do you get the multiple income streams, not only do you get the tangibility that comes with real estate, not only do you get the safety and security, but if you put it in an IRA, now you get the tax-free growth. And that, that, is, that, is just, that was mind-blowing to me that I could have been buying real estate tax-free before anybody else told me about this. And, and here's basically how it works. It's really simple. The only thing that's different is that we as the custodian of the retirement account just have to sign the documents. That's all that's really different. So when you have an IRA and you want to buy real estate, you got to realize when you make an offer on the property, the offer needs to be made with the buyer being your IRA, not your buyer being you, the person, your buyer being the IRA. And we have a special vesting that we give to you to use to, uh, and I'll just give you kind of a quick example is if I'm buying a house that's going to be owned by my Roth IRA, I would make an offer to buy the property, but the buyer on the contract would read Quest Trust Company for the benefit of Nate Hare's Roth IRA. I would send the contract to Quest. Quest would sign the contract as the buyer. Quest would send the earnest money to the, to the uh, seller or the title company. And then Quest would sign the closing documents. So the legwork that I would do is the same. The only thing that's different is the buyer is my IRA. Quest signs the documents, Quest sends the money, Quest handles the investment. And then when it comes to retire, I can decide to distribute that asset to myself or just live tax-free off the rents that are accumulated from that rental property, but I get to do it tax-free. And if you think about that, say you have 10 rental properties owned in a Roth IRA and you're 59 and a half, you can just literally live tax-free off the rents from that rental property for the rest of your life. And when you die, it passes to your heirs and they get to collect the rents tax-free for the rest of their lives. So there's just so many advantages to owning real estate in an IRA, and it's not difficult. You just really have to talk. I would always suggest talk to an IRA specialist. They'll break it down real simply. It's not hard to do. Uh, we have about $2 billion in assets under management today, um, and most of those are you know real estate-based assets, whether it's direct ownership of real estate by the IRA or, believe it or not, Jay, our largest holding at Quest Trust Company is promissory notes secured by real estate. 50% of our assets are promissory notes secured by real estate, not the real estate. So again, that, that goes to you real estate investors out there looking for private capital. More people would rather own notes secured by real estate than actually own the real estate. So that's a lot of ways to be passive with your IRA, not just active. Beautiful. Now, can you be a flipper or can you buy and sell a piece of real estate 
in your uh, in your self directed IRA account? You can. We have people do that all the time. It's just you know, it's no different than flipping a stock. You can buy and sell Coca Cola stock. You can buy and sell a house. The beauty part about buying and selling or buying and flipping property in your IRA is there's zero capital gains tax that you have to pay. So you can buy and sell 10 houses, no taxes. You can buy and sell 100 houses, no taxes. There's never any taxes when you're buying and selling things within the IRA. The only question about taxes is, depending on the type of IRA you have, when you take distributions, are the distributions taxable to you? That's the only question about taxes there. And the best accounts that the distributions are tax-free are the ones that I mentioned, the Roth IRA, tax-free distributions, and we have other two, two other accounts, an education savings account and a health savings account that are also tax-free on the distribution. So you get to grow in infinite amounts of profit, completely tax-deferred and even tax-free based on the type of account that you have. It's, it's amazing. It's life-changing if you can understand how to use it. Well, I can tell you what, from personal experience, if I had not been introduced to this world of self-directed IRAs, less than I'd be doing less than half the business that I do now. And here's why. So Carol Joy and I, we have right now 48 private lenders, 48 private lenders, individuals that are loaning money to us on our deals and funding our deals. Over half of those private lenders are using their self-directed IRA accounts at Quest. Here's the deal. 100% of those people had never heard of a self-directed IRA until I told them about it. And here's the other beautiful thing, as I said, if I hadn't known about the self-directed IRA and how it works and introduced them to this, then I would have less than half of the funding that I've got in place right now. So it's a very, very important part of, you know, a real estate investor's success in the business. Can a real estate investor buy and rehab and sell a piece of real estate in their Quest account? They, they can. There, there are some cautions there about when you're using your IRA to buy any type of investment, really, but specifically when you're talking about a rehab, there's an active component to that rehab. And the question is, who's swinging the hammer? Who's doing the rehab? There are some certain rules with you and your retirement account where you have to be at arm's length from the investment. You can only really take benefit from the investment from, through distributions. But when you're actively rehabbing a property owned by your IRA, it's just important that you personally are not doing the rehab yourself. You have to have third parties, non-disqualified third parties that actually do the rehab. The IRS just doesn't like you in there swinging the hammer or being the active part of your IRA investments. But those are all things that we teach you, uh, teach our, our uh, students and our clients through our classes. So there's no way I'm going to make anybody an expert you know, on, on this short call today, but I always urge people, go to our website, questtrust.com. We have a lot of education on there. We go live with, with uh, different Facebook feeds. If you follow our Facebook page, we go live with education. We teach all this stuff to keep, keep investors understanding the rules. And if you can play by the IRS's rules, there's no stopping you on how much money you can make completely tax-free just by understanding it. And I just want to give you some kudos, Jay, because I've talked to a lot of your students and a lot of the ones that, that are, you know, your private lenders with their IRAs. And, you know, Jay, Jay's being a little coy here, but he, not only is he able to use people's self-directed IRAs to go buy more property, to buy more investments, but there's also a mutual benefit to those people that are that are his lenders because most people that I've run into, they were not satisfied with their returns in those, quote, traditional investments. You know, their financial advisor might have had them, you know, in that CD. I, I, I call them certificates of depression. You know, <laughs> The things, yeah, the things that they, you know, you get 1% or 2% return, right? It sounds safe, but 2% return, it doesn't even keep up with inflation. So to me, that's just getting broke safely. So when I talk to, you know, students of Jays and, and other people that I run into is, you know, these people that had 2% return in their retirement account might find somebody like Jay that gives them what, much more than that in return. And that's a life-changing event to them too. They're able to retire sooner because they found a way to make above average return in something that is tangible and something that's more meaningful than that, you know, certificate of depression. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, 
Nate, you probably know this, but for the sake of our audience, every Thursday, the USA Today newspaper on the front page of the money section in the lower left-hand column in green publishes the average yields for certificates of deposit in the nation. Wow. Take mm -hmm. a look at that this Thursday. I looked at it a couple of weeks ago. You know, I asked my students, in fact, I was uh, speaking up in uh, Minneapolis last week, and I asked the uh, group I was speaking to, I said, just guess, what's the average 12-month certificate of depression paying these days? <laughs> And I heard everything from, you know, 2%, 1.75%, you know, 2.5%. Believe it or not, it's less than 1%, 0.91% average in the nation. Yeah. Uh, we're getting near the end of the show, but you mentioned something that I know is very, very interesting to our audience as well. And that is, how in the world do you invest in a note? What do you mean by that? By using your retirement funds. Well, I'll tell you from personal experience, that's actually what I primarily invest in today. So, you know, I understand real estate, not to the degree that I would say a real estate investor does, just because it's not my trade, but through, you know, the activities at Quest and, and the speaking engagements that I do, speaking to, you know, your groups and speaking at groups here in, in Texas is I run into a lot of real estate investors. So my personal story is I found a way to use my own retirement accounts to fund real estate investors flips, right? And, and I like to do it right here in Houston, for example. Now, why do I like to loan to flippers in Houston? A, because it's the, the city that I live in. So indirectly, to me, it's a socially conscious investment. Not only am I adding value to the community, but I'm making above average return, but I'm actually seeing my money in, in work. I'm seeing my money in play because I know exactly where it's at. But these real estate investors who I've come to know, and I keep my circle pretty tight. There's probably about three that I, that I lend to that have good track records, but they pay me above average return. I make double digit returns just using my money to passively loan to them. And I just watch the money come in. I call it mailbox money. Now I don't have to deal with the toilets and tenants. It fits my schedule, you know, because I, I don't have time to go out there and deal with tenants, but th that's what they do on a daily basis. So most of our clients, you know, we have 17,000 clients, 50% of them invest in that type of fashion, whether it's they're loaning to a real estate investor and they have a note in a deed of trust secured by the property, or they're loaning to somebody's LLC. We see people do it on a grander scale. If you're buying a commercial property or an apartment building, there might be 50 Quest clients that are invested into somebody's LLC that owns an apartment building. And that's just another way that people can use retirement accounts passively and just make interest payment, make interest income or, or, or something like that secured by real estate and they don't have to do a lot of the work. So it, it's really not that hard. All that I, I would need in, in my transactions is we just have an attorney drop a promissory note based on the agreement between me and the, the borrower. We close at a title company and, and my money's just, my IRA is just the bank. It's just used just like the bank. I still have the same security as the bank. The only difference is the payments that the borrower makes go to my IRA, not a bank. They go to my IRA. And when they go to my IRA, it's completely tax-free because it's going back to my Roth IRA. Beautiful. Well, you know what all this means, Nate, is if anybody has any retirement funds, they need to talk to one of your IRA specialists, period. <laughs> yeah, I, I say if anybody has a retirement account at all, it's good to talk to an IRA specialist and, and find out more. Because at the end of the day, I think you should really just take control of your retirement. And, and most people don't even know what they're invested in. So if you have a retirement account, just give us a call. We'll talk you through it and, and alleviate all those misconceptions you might have. All right, Nate, before we got on the show here, I twisted your arm. I wanted you to give my audience some really, really good value and some really nice free stuff so they can get some more education, et cetera. So for my audience to continue the conversation with you and Quest Trust. What have you got for my audience today? Well, for your audience, I've got first, I've got a special discount that I'm gonna give people. Is anybody that decides they wanna open up their own self-directed IRA, and we have seven types here at Quest. There's seven different types of accounts that give you tax advantages. We'll waive the account opening fee completely on those accounts. And okay? now what you have to do is you do have to use the coupon code Connor 
19 and, and, and our IRA specials will help walk you through that. And we'll also, if you open an account, we'll give you a free ticket to our upcoming Quest Expo. We only do it once a year. It's going to be this year in Houston, Texas, uh, August 23rd to the 25th. It's a great networking event. We're expecting about 700 plus people there. Um, I hope Jay can make it out. Uh, he's going to check his schedule and see if he can come out. But either way, I think it's a great way to uh, network with other self-directed IRA investors. And basically, we'll, we'll give that to you. And if anybody wants to take a part of that promo, just e shoot an email to the email address jconnorvip at questtrust.com. It's J, just the letter J, Connor, C-O-N-N-E-R, VIP at questtrust.com. That goes to our IRA specialist and they'll reach back out to you and give you a free consultation and get any accounts that you might need established or just answer any questions that you might have. What should they put in the subject line, Nate? Call me. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that's all they have to say. They, they can add more to it if they want, but just that email address, we like to keep track of, of, of Jay's students so that we know where they came from and that we know that the offer that we're providing them. So we've got that special email set up. And that, and that email actually goes even further for any students of Jay's or investors with Jay. We actually use that email address to handle Jay and his students and listeners specifically so that you get that expedited service you were talking about with no charge. So Jay Connor, VIP at questtrust.com. Just shoot us an email and we'll reach back out to you. All right, and the coupon code to get uh, free tickets to the uh, expo you got coming up. That's normal. That's a hundred and ninety nine dollar ticket that you're offering uh, my audience for free. Mm -hmm. The coupon the coupon code is C O N N E R Connor C O N N E R nineteen. Get some uh, free ticket to the expo, and if they decide they want to open up an account at Quest, uh, you're waiving the application free fee. So that makes it free as well. Nate, I can't thank you enough for being here on the show with us. Valuable content. And as I say, you know, this is the hem of the garment, folks. I mean, this is just, if you've just been introduced to self directed IRAs, whether you are, are a real estate investor, you want to be one, you want to borrow private money, you want to be a private money lender, like 48 of my people and earn unlimited returns each year with your retirement funds. Any of those different areas of interest, I can tell you folks from personal experience, Quest Trust is the place to be, whether no matter what area that you're wanting to participate, whether it's just having your account there or uh, being a private lender or borrowing or being a real estate investor or even larger than that, you want to, maybe you want to learn how to invest in notes like Nate does. The beautiful thing is that it's IRS approved and it just opens up your world to so many more areas and strategies to where you can get high rates of return safely and securely. Nate, I'm looking forward to having you at my uh, upcoming live event, which is right around the corner as well. And it's always uh, great to have you there. Nate, once again, thank you so much. Well, I appreciate your time. Can't wait to see you guys. And uh, thank you thank you to all the listeners out there. See you guys soon. All right. Thank you, Nate. Okay. And to everybody that's joining into the show, thank you for joining in. Wishing you all the best. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. Wishing you all the best in taking your real estate investing business to the next level. Bye for now.